Interior Classroom Day. Shannon, Brendan, Chad, Nick, and Victoriana all stand facing Madison James. This is how we get the bar back. A dramatic pause. We call the police. Madison walks over to a landline phone sitting at the desk nearby and picks it up, dialing 911. It rings. Madison, stop and think. What are they really going to do for us? Oh, so some idiot with a J.C. Penny suit and mismatched socks blows up our bar and gets away with it just because my dad is with him? Loretta answers the phone. MSU Police Department, what can I do for you? A bunch of mobsters made our bar explode. We lost the building. All our alcohol- Look, I can't do much for a liquor storage shortage. Try Rick's. Or Canada. You don't understand. We need help catching actual criminals. They're on the loose. <laughs> All right, kids. You stay safe and have fun. Remember to call with something serious next time. No. Loretta hangs up. No, no. Damn it. I'm trying again. Madison dials again. In the background, Shannon and Brendan whisper to each other quietly and sneak yeah. out. MSU Police Department. If you are eighth caller of the day, you'll be entered to win free tickets to see the Bare Naked Ladies live in Claxton this July. Well, we don't care about that. Yeah, only assholes like that band. Uh, my name is Monroe James. Wait, you're Madison. Shut up, Chad. My name is Monroe James, and I've got a really big gun down at Monroe James's Ale House for criminals and thugs, and I'm gonna do some super bad stuff. <sighs> Man, uh, we should probably go do something about that. Yeah! Madison hangs up. Let's go! Madison rushes out of the room, the gang following quickly behind him. Interior, the bar, day. Vinny and Tony sit at the bar talking to Roman, who stands behind it. Yeah, I kind of figured I'd get to stop after the whole takeover thing ended. Yeah, uh, just make me a damn screwdriver, Roman. Roman starts making the screwdriver. Tony! What are you still doing here? Yeah, isn't the boss, like, really mad at you? Shouldn't you be fleeing or something? Oh, well, you know, nowhere else will hire me. You know, I applied at Chuck E. Cheese's and they threw a bottle of lukewarm Sunny D at me. Still doesn't explain why the boss won't fire you. Well, I'm his nephew. Really? Oh yeah, classic nepotism. Well, Roman, why are you still here? <laughs> Mr. Monroe did a favor for me on behalf of my grandma, so I owe him. You're an honorable man. No, he's just really scary. When he gets mean, you know. Roman makes an angry face and does little devil hands. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Definitely. What was the favor? She wanted to do a good thing, and I wanted to help. Oh. So you are honorable. Yeah, I guess. What about you, Vinny? Oh, me? Oh. <laughs> I just like killing people. Ah, right. Suddenly, a loud crash of sound comes from the entrance of the bar. All three gangsters turn to the sounds in surprise. Vinny grabs a bottle and slowly advances. Hey, don't hurt anybody, Vinny. Shh. I'm not. I'm just gonna brain him. In bursts Johnny. <sighs> Everybody relaxes. Jesus Christ! Johnny! Oh, is he here? No! What? Oh Vinny goes back to the bar, but Johnny joins him. What was all the racket on the way in? The new door's a pole. I can never get used to that. Roman nods in understanding. <sighs> Alright. What brings you in? I'm meeting a new friend. A friend, eh? Are we not... enough friend for you, Johnny? Oh no, Vinny, you're more than enough friend for me. I just sort of stumbled on them. He looks off in a wistful gaze. It involves yoga and the internet. The door to the bar is heard opening. Oh, there they are now. Hide. What? Why? You're gonna ruin it. Get down. Johnny shoes the other three gangsters behind the bar and makes them duck down. Then goes over to the bar's table and sits. He takes a moment to lick his palm and slick his hair back with it. Valerie walks into the room. Oh, hello there. Hi. Are you new open? Yeah, uh, save as? Yep. 
Valerie walks over to Johnny and shakes his hand, then looks slightly confused at how wet it is and wipes it off on her pants. You want to have a seat? No, bourbon's fine. Hey, that's what I drink too. Sorry it took so long for me to get in. The door is a pull now, and that always gets me. Same! I always wonder, why don't they just make doors that go both ways? Right? It would be so much easier. Yeah! How do you like the new look? It looks good. Less like it's held up by plastic chairs. Really? Aw, thanks. Madison, Victoriana, Chad, and Alex burst into the room. Vinny, Roman, and Tony stand from behind the bar. Hey! You again? Customers! Vinny slaps Tony on the back of the head. Ow! Oh, why'd you do that for? Sorry, Johnny's all the way over there. Oh, you guys are in for it now. Oh, yeah? Because we're... Victoriana notices Valerie talking to Johnny. Val? Hey, Vic. What are you doing here? I was just talking to this guy. Hi there. Valerie, that's the... Two police officers, Loretta and Darius, enter the bar, guns raised. Police officers! Put your hands up! Everyone puts their hands up. Which one of you is Monroe James? Uh, the boss isn't here right now. We could take a message, maybe. What? The cops lower their guns and look around in confusion. There was a guy with a gun, right? I got that right. No, I lied to get you here. They stole our bar. Oh, do you have a deed? Something to prove you own it? Um, no. Is the, uh, is the owner here? Scarlet's off doing a journey of mourning and sadness or something. Uh, how's she doing? Not good, Chad. Obviously. So I'm gonna take that as a uh, no, right? The owner's not in? Oh, he is. Monroe James steps into the bar, followed by Big Dog. Big Dog, my coat. Big Dog removes Monroe James's coat and hangs it up, staring daggers at the gang as she does. Officer, I own this establishment. What can I do for you? You own this place? Yes. My associates and I acquired it legally very recently. So these are your employees? He motions to Roman, Vicky, and Tony. Yes, all fine, upstanding citizens. <laughs> hey. How you doing? Hi. All right, cool. This all looks good to me. Poonskis? You read my mind. The cops leave. What? No, don't go. Damn it. Damn it. Son, why don't you send your friends on their way and come spend a little time with your old man? No, Dad, this isn't... Valerie and Johnny laugh loudly from the other side of the room. <laughs> right? Right? Who knew that you gotta knot the rope, right? Wow. You're so worldly. Yeah, I am, ain't I? Wait, hold on, you should meet my friends. We've met. No, but like really meet him. She leans into Victoriana. Stop it with this weird grudge. I'm trying to get it. He blew up the bar! I said I was sorry. He did say that. Wait, hold on. Val points to Chad and Alex. What are you guys doing here? Where's Thad? After the bar blew up, he sort of had a, uh, breakdown? Exterior. A cold street in what looks like Russia. Night. Thad wanders down a frozen street, shivering and muttering to himself. No booze. It's all gone. All gone. A beer vendor walks by. Beer here. Get your beer here. No place to find a drink for miles. Interior, the bar, day. Back in the bar. It's been bad. Growling comes from near the bar across the room. Big Dog has her eyes locked on the frat bros and looks very mad. Hey, didn't you guys uh, punch her in the face during that big fight? No, that was Thad. Sad. Thad? Oh, Thad. It is kind of hard to tell you guys apart. Really? Everybody in the bar nods, including Alex. 
Big Dog starts to advance on Chad and Alex. Is she looking at us? Yep. They start to back up cautiously. Kinda angry looking, huh? Yep. We run. Yep. Chad runs away, leaving Alex behind. Alex looks after him for a moment, then back at Big Dog. She growls at him, he runs. Exterior, the streets of East Lansing, day. Big Dog pursues Alex and Chad down the street. Bro, you left me behind. I'm sorry, she's just really scary. They jump over a few assorted objects. Chad smoothly, Alex clumsily, and Big Dog with unnecessary flourish. Chad and Alex run around a corner. Big Dog follows them. After a few moments, they come back around the corner, Big Dog still in pursuit. They pass a preacher. Excuse me, kids, would you like to hear about the word of uh, Jesus Christ? No, thank you. Sorry, maybe later? Big Dog takes a moment to stop and punch the oh, preacher God. in the gut, then continues her pursuit. Alex and Chad continue to run, Big Dog gaining on them. How do we get rid of her? I don't know, she seems really persistent. Big Dog violently throws a baby carriage out of her way. The house! Go to the frat house! Yes, we can lock her out, come on! They change direction and make for the frat house. Interior frat house, day. Nick sits in the frat house playing a pink Nintendo DS. After several moments of silence, Chad and Alex burst through the front door, locking it behind themselves. Damn. Bro, we almost died. Dang, that's kinda scary. He doesn't look up from his Nintendo DS. Where the heck is Brendan? I think he's in here somewhere. Shannon comes down the staircase, wearing a bathrobe that's way too small for him, but it's perfectly Brendan-sized. He goes to the sink and fills up two glasses of water. He turns, spotting Alex and Chad. There is an incredibly awkward silence. Oh. More silence. Hello. Hey. Prof? Evening, fellow. Um. Yeah, he was getting tutored by some old guy in a stupid jacket. Yes, correct. Tutoring. Brendan walks down the stairs and up to Shannon, wearing Shannon's stupid jacket, boxers, and nothing else. Hey, babe, where are those? Brendan notices Alex and Chad. Oh. Uh, hey. Really? What? We like the same shows. And we have a lot in common. But dude, he's so old. And he's so uncool. Not true. He knows more about classical Jewish literature than anyone else in this room. Is that even a real thing? Is what he teaches, man. My fellow young people, let us not get concerned with who is with whom and who is the absolute shit when it comes to knowledge of Sholem Aleichem. Tell me, what brings you here? We live here. Ah, right. Big Dog crashes through the window, pouncing into the room. Ah! Ah! Shannon jumps to hide behind Brendan. The frat bro is back up in fear. Who is she? Oh, I remember you from the bar fight I got- Big Dog throws a book lying nearby at Shannon, hitting uh. him on the head and immediately knocking him out. Victoriana, Madison, James burst through the front door of the frat house, breaking it down. What are you guys doing here? We followed you here after we got kicked out and the whole thing with the big dog. Big dog screams and charges forward. Victoriana puts her foot out and trips her, causing her to fly into a bunch of cardboard boxes that make breaking sounds like glass. My Ming vase collection! I told you not to leave those there, dude. Shut up! Just let me grieve. He starts crying and runs off. <laughs> big dog lies dazed in the pile of boxes. Now what do we do with her? Oh, I've got an idea. Interior frat house boiler room, day. Big Dog, bound and gagged, is thrown into the boiler room. Oh, we'll let you out. Sometime. Interior frat house, day. Chad walks back into the common area of the frat house. Shannon is being helped up by Brendan in a daze. We'll stand guard. Make sure she doesn't escape. Alex and Chad guard the door. So, uh, now what? I have a new plan. Madison, these plans aren't- Madison picks up a broom and holds it like a sword. Physical violence! 
He marches out of the house. Everybody looks at each other for a moment and then quickly follows him. Interior, the bar, day. Roman is on the phone. What? No, Grandma. This is not a good time to visit. The police were here earlier. Are you in town? Yeah, dumb question. Look, please, not today. Please. Yeah, I love you too. I. Madison James stalks into the bar and smashes all the glasses on the bar with his broom, sending Vinny and Roman down into hiding. Ah! Monroe James walks over to Madison as all the rest of the gang enter. Something wrong, son. You're an asshole, Dad. And if you don't, won't give this place back, then I'm just gonna break it. Ah! Madison breaks more glasses with the broom. Everyone but Monroe James covers. Oh no, no, come on! That's all the glassware we've got. Vinny stands. You, uh, want me to take care of him, boss? No, no. There's nothing to take care of. He's my son. He's allowed to do as he wishes in my business. Shut up! Madison starts smashing more things. After a bit of this, he looks over at the others who aren't helping. <sighs> Why aren't you doing anything? Um... They might kill us. A lot of ways. Right, yeah. He's only my dad. You want I should beat the crap out of them, boss? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Vinny begins to advance. Suddenly, L bursts into the bar. Vinny! Everyone turns to L. She points a sword at Vinny. I come for your head. Oh, you got my fish. I challenge you to a duel. Wait a minute, that's not fair. He doesn't even have a sword. Then he pulls a sword out of nowhere. Oh. Alright. Well, well, shit. Oh, let's do this. Vinny and Elle march out of the bar. Someone go make sure she doesn't get hurt. Same. One of you mugs go watch Vinny's back. Nobody moves. All the gang look at Shannon. All the mobsters look at Tony. Shit. Tony! Oh, shit. shit. Tony and Shannon both exit the bar. Uh, Johnny, don't you have a problem with your friend getting himself in a sword fight? Johnny. Johnny and Val are sitting closer together, laughing with their hands lightly touching in the middle of the table. Johnny! Oh, what? Sorry, I was distracted. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, is he here? That's what I said. Right, one of these days, he's gonna be here, and they're all gonna look dumb. You're so smart. Oh, stop it. She gives him a playful little push. <sighs> well, she's not going to be any help. I hope Elle doesn't get hurt. Bro, I think she'll be good. I mean, how bad could it get? Exterior Park Day. Elle and Vinny walk to the center of arena in the park and draw their swords. I'm gonna kill you real bad, you know? Shut up and salute, you son of a bitch. They salute each other. Tony and Shannon walk over to a nearby wall and lean on it. Elle and Vinny fight. It's awesome looking. It looks like Vinny is going to win. So, the mob. How do you like working for them? Honestly, it, it kind of sucks. I, I'd really rather be a magician. A magician? No kidding. Yeah, I, I tried to do some tricks for Mr. Monroe's show a couple weeks ago, but he got really mad once I messed him up. I'm sure you could do it. Be a magician, I mean. You... you really think so? Yeah. Said, oh, Shannon could never teach class at a major university. Shannon's too stupid to open a jar, let alone teach. Well, look at me now, huh? Huh? Look at me now! Vinny gets distracted by Shannon's yelling. L takes advantage of this and turns the tide, throwing away Vinny's sword and pressing Vinny down to his knees, her sword to his throat. Any last words? Cincinnati, <laughs> go to hell. Tony jumps forward. Wait, Vinny, I'll save you. Tony attempts a magic trick. Abracadabra. Nothing happens. Wait, shit, the sun was supposed to explode by now. Vinny knocks L's sword aside and runs for it. 
Yeah, run away. I am. If I ever see you around here again, I'll cut you to the bone, you rapscallion. <laughs> I'll be back. Just you wait. And I'll be ready. L turns dramatically. Quickly, back to the barn. Interior, the bar, day. L enters the bar, followed by Tony and Shannon. Babe! Brendan gives Shannon a cute little kiss on the cheek. I'm super glad you didn't get killed in a sword fight. As am I. As am I. I'm glad you're okay too, man. Tony, stop making friends with the weirdo in the jacket. But we have so much in common. Damn it, Tony. If you weren't my nephew, I'd have had Vinny kill you a long time ago. Speaking of, where is he? I defeated him. He's been exiled from this land. She just kicked your toughest guy's ass. Yeah, and it probably looked awesome. Oh, it did. Tony nods in agreement. Monroe James laughs. <laughs> you stupid kids. You think because you win one little sword fight you can just have this place back, huh? I've spent years building up a criminal empire, the likes of which you couldn't even begin to imagine. And sure, all my goons are stupid as rocks that were dropped on their rock heads as dumb little rock babies. But a goon is a goon is a goon. And I did it all. All the hard work, all the sacrifices, all the threatening of small business owners, all of it... He points at Madison. ...was for you, son. And you don't appreciate it. Madison looks down. But you will, as soon as we take care of your friends. The sound of the bar door opening is heard. Ah, here they are now, officers. The mayor of East Lansing, Glinda Wavstrad, enters the bar. Mayor, 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 mayor of East Lansing, Lansing? Lansing? Glinda, Glinda Wavstrad? Grandma? Roman, honey, are you all right? Grandma, what are you doing here? I told you this is not a good time for a visit. I know, but then there was this loud crashing and yelling, and I came as fast as I could. Your grandma is the mayor of East Lansing? <laughs> yeah. How have you never mentioned this? Uh, I talk about my grandma all the time. Roman, get her out of here. Uh, you got it, Mr. James. Oh, so you're Monroe James. Glinda Wavstrad walks over to Monroe James. Roman, how does she know my name? My grandson and I talk a lot about a lot of things, Mr. James. Now, I may not understand why he works for you, but I do understand that you treat him terribly. Oh, you understand, huh? You think you know things, Glinda Wavstrad, mayor of East Lansing, huh? You think you know your grandson? Monroe James pinches Roman's cheek. Goody two-shoes, Roman. Serving the people, little legal boy. He turns back to Glinda Wavstrad. He works for me because I did a favor for him. For you! That orphanage you wanted last year? The one that got caught up in the red tape and the democracy? He knew you wanted it oh so bad, so he called me. I made it happen. I got it built. It was me. Your goody little grandson, he's a goon. Just like the rest of them. He doesn't even have his bartending license. Glinda Wavstred turns to Roman. Roman, is this true? Sorry, Grandma. Glinda Wavstred walks over to Roman. Roman... I'm disappointed. Really? Yes. You made a deal with members of organized crime. That's really bad. Yeah, when you, when you say it like that. I mean, you're right. It is kind of obvious now. But, Roman, you could have just talked to me. But it, it's something you wanted to do. You needed to do. I, I didn't want to be the kid who kept having to ask you for help. I wanted to do something good. I'm sorry. I know you are, honey. Now, I've got to know, what have you done for this man? I mean, served drinks mostly, I talked on the phone, oh, and we, uh, robbed a bank. Really? Sorry, Grandma. Loretta and Darius burst into the, into the bar, guns raised again. Everybody, hands on your... Loretta and Darius stop and gawk at Glinda Wavstrad. Mayor of East Lansing, Glinda Wavstrad? Hello, officers. Oh my gosh. Loretta and Darius realize they are holding their guns on the mayor of East Lansing and quickly lower them. Arrest these kids. They've been making a mess of my bar. Loretta and Darius look at the mayor. Um... Officers, arrest this man. Tell them, Roman. Roman sighs. 
Yeah, we kind of lied and punched a bunch of people and uh, robbed the bank, and I'm pretty sure Mr. James shot a guy at one point. And we scammed a bunch of people on the phone. Tony, shut up. Uh, that too. Oh, and uh, we blew up this bar. Right, Johnny? Johnny. Johnny and Val are still talking in the corner of the bar, completely unaware of everything that's been happening. Johnny. What? Johnny and Val turn to everyone else. Johnny, seriously? I'm sorry, I just got lost in her enchanting eyes. They're like, the color of the sea. Aww. Not like green or yellow, you know. It's that one color. So, so, arrest the ones that look like gangsters. Officers, please. This is ridiculous. These accusations are meaningless. Other than what this stupid boy says, what possible proof could you have that any of us are criminals? Glinda Wildstrad points to Monroe James' alehouse for criminals and thugs sign on the wall. Circumstantial at best. Well, it's, uh, it's also on video. What now? Yeah, you did shoot a guy on public access TV once. But nobody recorded that, right? Nobody in their right mind would do that. <laughs> oh, I did. Odie holds up a VHS tape. I had my mom record it so I could watch my act back. Tony, I hate you so much. Well, that works for me. The cops nod to each other, then begin rounding up Tony, Roman, Monroe James, and Johnny. As Tony is led away, he smiles. Oh man, I'm gonna have so much time to practice! Roman is cuffed. Grandma, I'm... I'm sorry. It's okay, Roman. Some community service and good behavior, and you're out. Yeah. Yeah. I love you, Grandma. I love you too, Roman. Glinda Wadstrad exits the bar. Johnny is cuffed. Hey, what the hell? I really should have been paying attention. Well, have fun in jail the rest of your life. Darius begins to lead Johnny away. Wait, officer. Darius stops and turns back. Take me with him. What? What? Val, you can't go to jail. But I love him. You met him today. But we're perfect for each other. Ma'am, I can't send you to prison if you haven't committed a crime. So, sorry? Valerie sighs, steals herself, then punches Darius in the face. After a moment of stunned silence, he recovers. <sighs> Jeez, just... Well, that'll do it. Darius cuffs Valerie. You would do that? For me? Yeah. Oh man, jail is going to be so much fun with you there. Monroe James is cuffed. Get your hands off me. Watch the suit. Monroe James locks eyes with Madison James. Son, there's a man in Poughkeepsie. His number is hidden on the bottom of our butler's shoe. I need you to find it and, um... Dad? Yeah? I'm not going to do that. What? You blew up my favorite place in the world and tried to kill all of my friends. You're going to prison, and I'm going to let it happen. But uh, I did this for you. It was all for you. I was always there, Dad. You didn't need this. If your mother was here, she would... She would send you to prison because she was a good person, and you're not. Madison turns away from Monroe James and walks over to the gang. Son, don't turn your back on me. Madison! Darius leads Monroe James, Johnny, Tony, and Roman out of the bar. Loretta walks up with Valerie in cuffs. Well, I guess that settles everything then. Wait, who owns the bar? Well... According to the Blair Convention, the property of the arrested individual passes to their next of kin. What? Are you a lawyer? Well, I'm a James Madison student, so kind of. His next of kin is... Me. I own the bar. You own the bar. We have the bar back? We have the bar back. Everybody cheers except for Loretta, who is very confused. Everyone celebrates. Victoriana walks over to them. I'm gonna miss you. I'll be around. No, you won't. You're going to prison. I know, but I'll be okay. Victoriana nods and hugs her. After a moment, Loretta begins to lead her away. 
And I will be around. Johnny's broken out of prison like six times, so I'll be out in no time. Everybody surrounds the bar, passing drinks to each other. Madison stands on a stool behind the bar. A toast. Everybody looks to him. We fought hard for this bar, and now we've got it back. And we're not going to let it go of it for a long time, that's for sure. To family, to friendship, to Nikki O'Tools. To, to Nikki O'Tools. Everybody cheers and drinks. Smash to black. Mid credits scene one. Monroe James is thrown in his cell. Here's your cellmate, you bum. Tony is thrown in next to him. Oh my god. Oh, what? Boss! Oh, this is awesome! He fans a deck of cards. Pick a card, boss! Any card! <laughs> Mid credits scene two. Val and Johnny run away from an explosion and jump in a car. They turn to each other. I love you. I love you too. Police sirens sound off from the distance. Now step on. They speed away. After credits scene. Big Dog remains bound and gagged in the boiler room. <laughs>